Greetings. I'm Adara Bellamore. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about Satan and his principles. How it culminates into your life when you start working with Satan and the demons. Now, something triggered me to talk about this. I took a time off, I guess for two days, and didn't make any video because I was not in the right frame of mind. And in fact, even now, I, I'm not really in a state, but I thought it's really important for me to come out and talk about this. Now, when I search the net, I see a lot of utter nonsense about Satan. And so I thought of talking about it. You know, I read things like, pray for Satan and his followers. Uh, Satan's gonna attack you. And horrible enactments. Uh, dramatic uh, representations of uh, a Christian person and a person possessed by Satan acting weird, attacking people, psychotic and stuff like that. Everything negative is associated with Satan. So I thought that it's really important now to talk about it openly. Like I have been talking about my experiences with other demons and my journey and stuff like that. There, is, there are still lots and lots of topics that I would like to talk about, but this is something really important. I've seen this and I've seen others talk about this. Um, that those who start working with demons before they start working, they have gone through lots of traumatic experiences in their life. You know? And they are wounded people. And I would say I'm one of them. But does that make us weak? No. It doesn't make us weak at all. It only makes us stronger. How, I'll tell you. People, especially people who start off as being innocent, naive, not, uh, not really aware of how the world works, you know, they start off with a very childlike approach to life and then they face all these horrors that are going around the world people killing each other murder rape terrorism religious fundamentalism racial attacks and what not and who is to be blamed for all of this? Satan. Whereas the truth is that all those people who show themselves to be ideal, who tell you the should and the should not, are the ones, the preachers, who are mostly engaging in these kind of acts. Satanic principles are not antagonistic to life. Yes, satanic principles are based on the individual, the self. That is why we talk of self deification. That is why we talk about awakening the inner God and Goddess. But what exactly is it? 
what are the principles and why trauma pain all sorts of negative experiences that shock us from within and leave us speechless we feel like this is the end of the world why these kind of experiences lead us to satan because satan represents truth he represents strength empowerment freedom from these so called forces the good forces the peaceful forces that actually try to subjugate you take for example women and i'm not a feminist or anything but yes i have gone through the horrors and i'm talking about it today it's very hard for me to talk about it i'm not going to go into details but i would say that i was too young when i was sexually assaulted and nobody came forward to heal me when i shared my experience it was extremely extremely painful for me to talk about it i got no healing i got no love i got no support i had to deal with it alone i'm not going to go into details today i'm not ready i've already suffered something yesterday and day before so i'm not going to talk about it like but what i'm like going through right now is that i asked the question to belial that why is it that after being loving giving generous kind offering my guidance offering my support and everything that i can why after doing all of this people have pushed me shoved me stabbed me hurt me caused me great pain left me when i needed them but came to me when they needed me why even after started starting my work with such a great force as belial as satan i still was following the the old uh principles of being there for people loving them unconditionally and all of that i'm not saying there is anything wrong with that or i'm not saying that you can't cannot work with demons if you are a loving and kind person it's not like that in fact i was most loved and understood and protected by demons not by anything else and the ones to cause me most pain trauma and shock are my fellow human beings and i think many of us can understand that you there is no creature no being as dangerous as malicious as harmful as a human being we exploit nature we exploit animals we exploit demons we exploit angels we exploit a- anything and everything and we blame it on either satan or on fellow human beings or on some supernatural force or god whatever we don't want to take the responsibility <laughs> so when you know i have i have always faced this problem in my life in my and i'm coming out in the open because i know there are people who need to hear this okay girls boys transgender or whoever you are i just want to let you know i respect you and the journey that you have undertaken whatever you have faced if no one has heard you i'm sending you my best wishes and i want you to listen to this very carefully i every time i asked belial why is it that i'm all out for my family all out for people i call my friends my relatives other people who don't even know me like i don't even know them properly they came to me for help people do that all the time they come to me for help i help them i love them i understood them i spend 
spend my energy, my time trying to solve their problems. Why? Why did they leave me? Why did they misbehave with me? Why did they cause me pain? Why did they abuse me? Balial said, they'll keep on doing that until you realize. I said, what is there for me to realize? He said, it's a sickness. You were sick. I asked him why. He said, because even after experiencing this so many times, you know, being backstabbed, being traumatized, being abused. And you know, people have really abused me on my face for loving them, for taking care of them, asking nothing in return. He said, that show this love to yourself. If I'm standing with you, it's because you have great potential. And people are noticing it, they will notice it. They have noticed it since your childhood. But you know what your problem is? This sickness. This sickness that I need to be there for people. That I need to help them. That I need to heal them. I need to love them. I said, what is the problem with that? There is already a lot of hatred in the world around me. I want to be there because I know that there are people out there. They're, they're facing shit. They're alone. What's wrong? He said, deal with your shit first. Love yourself first. Understand yourself first. And if, if you're offering somebody love, care, protection, even after that, they're abusing you. That they, then they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Don't waste your time and energy. It's so simple, still you don't understand it. You fight with yourself to be with them. Why? Why? Are you nothing? Are you nothing? Are you nonsense? You're sick. Don't do it. Love yourself. There is nothing wrong with loving another. But they have to respect you. They have to love you back. They have to deserve your love. You're wasting your energy. You're wasting your precious time. There's so much for you to do. You know that. You're solving their problems. You're handing them your knowledge, your wisdom, for which you have had sleepless nights. You have exhausted yourself. You have been dedicated. Why? So this is one very important satanic principle. Love only those who deserve your love. And the one who deserves your love the most is you yourself. Follow it today without wasting any more time and energy. It's great that you're loving. And I'm not saying that you have to, you know, control your loving self. Seriously, there is need of love in the world. And I have faced the same thing with demons also. They do respond to loving energy very well, very well. But why Blial said that it's a sickness, you're sick? He didn't mean to say anything to hurt me. He was straightforward like he is. He was telling me about a very important satanic principle, which you must follow. Do not waste your time and your energy unnecessarily on people who are going to spit on your face, who are going to take your energy and give you nothing in return. You know it inside. They don't deserve your love. They don't deserve your care. The more love you give them, the more abusive they become, the more they take advantage of you. So that's why pain was necessary. Pain was necessary to make me go inwards, to make me go within. And this path is not easy. It's definitely, definitely rewarding. Because you wake up from a... From Years of slumber, from 
years of hibernation, you wake up finally. And nobody's asking you to not be kind, to not be sweet, to not be loving. But there needs to be reciprocation. You cannot, like, keep on filling somebody else's glass, you know, when they don't even say a thank you, when they don't even feel that thank you from within. The other day, a lady, my, she's my neighbor, she came to my place with another lady and they just visited me because they heard that I'm not doing well. Like, they heard from somewhere that I'm not well after I came back from my trip. So they were concerned that what happened to her. They came to meet me. And I, of course, could not tell them about Bilial and me. Those of you who have seen that video, they know what happened in the trip. So I was like, yeah, I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I'm having some cold and something. It's, it's, it'll be fine. It's due to the season change, I'll be okay. That lady, she said that, you know, about me, you know that uh, if you do a little bit, like if you offer her a glass of water, she'll thank you several times. <laughs> she gets too formal. I, I, I laughed and I said, I don't get formal. I actually like feel very thankful with a little act of kindness like that's how I see it so people will notice your worth people will notice your good qualities all of it but it's also very important for you to see your own goodness Be nice, be loving, be kind. But don't forget to be loving, be kind, and be caring and protective towards your own self. Another satanic principle, self-respect, pride, and self-worth. People confuse it with arrogance. It's not arrogance. It's not arrogance. And what is meant by self-respect? Does it mean showing a lot of attitude or tantrums? No, nope, not at all. Self-respect means knowing your worth. It means standing by yourself, even if you're all alone and people are throwing stones at you for no reason. It means having the dignity to walk away from something or someone who has done you wrong. You loved them, you cared for them, that's fine. But if they ill-treated you, they did something that they were not supposed to do, then you should simply move away in silence, in dignity. No need to waste your energy fighting. Another satanic principle is loving yourself. It sounds pretty easy. The new age is following it. People are making blogs on it, vlogs on it. Everybody is talking about loving yourself. But nobody knows that loving yourself is actually a satanic principle. The God-fearing people don't say love yourself. They always say question yourself. This is wrong about you. That is wrong about you. You can't do this right. You can't do that wrong. Uh, so, sorry, you can't do that right. You're wrong. 
Every step you take is wrong. You have to better yourself here. You have to better yourself here. They don't accept you. But the satanic principle is about self-acceptance, having a positive self-concept, loving yourself. You're black, you're white, you're tall, you're short, you're f fat, you're thin. <laughs> Bullshit. You're amazing. Love yourself. Satan says, love yourself. Another satanic principle. Again, very simple, but challenging. Being yourself. Most of the time, we are only presenting ourselves as someone we are not. Wearing so many masks that it gets difficult. Even people who say that I'm very genuine, you know, I talk my mind. I can see through literally, even when they're saying it. They would say this thing and then, you know, in some other setting, they're doing something absolutely opposite to what they say about themselves. They are so, people are so contradictory. Why? Because they don't know who they are. So being yourself means delving deep within yourself and knowing who you truly are. Without knowing who you truly are, you cannot awaken the inner God or Goddess. And it's a process. I would say that I'm in the process of being myself. The society, the rules and regulations, the societal norms, people, whatever they have taught me over the years, it has always made me question myself. Even though <laughs> I've always been the typical good girl, obedient, <laughs> you know, sit here, I would sit there, do your homework, I would do my homework. I was so docile. I was bullied. I was, everything was d done to me, you know, everything. I still didn't let myself, I, I broke many times. I broke many times miserably. Everything was shocking to me when I was growing up. It was like a, a hostile world. I couldn't relate to it. Everything. So naturally when we grow up like this, and I think all of us at some point in, in some degree have faced this. There's no perfect parent. There's no perfect child. There's no perfect family. And some of us come from abusive families, more, more, more or less. We try to project to the world that we are perfect family, but it's not so. It's an idealized version of us that we are just showing to others. Though I'm thankful, I just speak my mind the way it is and I would say I'm thankful to my mother for letting me explore my spirituality, for letting me explore myself. She was an overprotective mother. I understand it. And unknowingly, she may have said or done things that was damaging, but I would still thank her for her care, for her love, for her sacrifices that she has always done for me. I cannot, I, I'm grateful. I would not lie, I'm grateful. And she was a natural born psychic, so I got it from her. She inspired me to work on my gifts. She inspired me to walk the lesser known path, the challenging path to explore my spiritual path. <sighs> we had a bittersweet relationship and it was fine. She's no more here. She's in the spirit world. I thank her for everything. If she also taught me to 
hate other religions, hate other people, I would not have been where I am today. She taught me to be tolerant, understanding and loving towards others who are different from me. She also taught me that light and dark both are important. We cannot say that one can exist without the other. She was talking about light and dark forces, basically angels and demons kind of thing. She once even told me, she used the word demons in my native language, and she said that, do you really think that they are wrong people, they are negative and evil? I said, I don't know. I see all the goddesses and gods slaying them. She said, I think they deserve understanding, they deserve love. They have not got it. That touched me somewhere. But I was quite young. I was not yet sure what that meant. But I, it did touch me somewhere when she said that demons are as much part of the source as the angels are. I'm not from a Christian background. But, you know, by discussing with me various topics on spirituality, she really sparked uh, this inquisitiveness in me, this zest in me to find out more, to carve out a path for myself. So, even then, <laughs> I was, by everyone, by teachers, by friends who used to bully me because I was quite a quiet kind of child, shy and quiet. Even though I was very talented, I could sing, I could do poetry, I could, I was good in declamation and speech, in skits and plays, in studies. My lunch was, my tiffin was stolen, I was beaten up. <laughs> I had very long hair, so boys used to pull my hair mercilessly, beating me, slapping me, doing things. And I used to be so embarrassed that my entire hair would be disheveled. I used to board the school bus in that state and people would stare at me and my face used to be red. I used to go back home and get a good scolding from my mother. You know what she used to tell me? How dare you not stand up for yourself? <laughs> she was like Lady Bilal. And I understand it now. But that time I, I was so different. My personality was so different. I could not. I did not know why they were bullying me. I had no clue why they were tearing the pages of my notebook, stealing my homework, my assignment, eating my tiffin, stamping on my foot, beating me, pulling my hair. I was just seen as somebody docile and nice and you, you can do anything with her, you know. Over the years, a lot of trauma, a lot of pain has changed me. I have learned to stand up for myself. I have fought courageously with my own vices, my own weaknesses, and with others who dared to cross the line. I have learned to be myself. I have learned to retain the positive qualities of being understanding being loving, being kind, at the same time, being smart, being brave and courageous, being, you know, being a little bit wicked so that people don't cross their line. Life has taught me, Satan has taught me. But I wouldn't say it was his doing. What I would say is that it led me to him. It led me to myself. I understood who I am. I understood that it's okay to be who I am. The only thing that I don't need to be is self-negating or self-sacrificing. That is what Bilial was talking about when he said you're sick. You don't have to sacrifice yourself for others. 
what are they doing for you? Nothing. They are giving you nothing. Zero. Zero involvement. They don't even listen to you. And I had this experience recently with a person. I don't want to mention much about it, but it really shook me once again. Like, it was, it was like I was doing pretty well. Then uh, I met this person. And after a very long time, I started feeling human again. And I thought I could just have the just have the pleasure and the leisure and the blessing to be my loving kind self again, to open up to love again. Oh gosh, it hit me so hard. I know that person is dealing with their own shit, I understand it. But I also understood through this experience, which was very painful, that I have to respect and love myself as well. I did... I did more than I should. But still, there was no gratitude, there was no thankfulness. That person traumatized me even more. Didn't listen to my story, didn't listen to anything that I had to share. Nothing, no response. I understood that I have committed the same mistake. And I went back to all these satanic principles. I went through them again. And that's why I'm sharing them with you today. I know the video has been long enough, but it's important to know. Be yourself, love yourself, love those who deserve your love. Work on your self-respect, pride and self-worth. And remember, no pain, no gain. Believe in yourself.